Hello, welcome to Maths with Jay. Last time we had a look at using a double integral to find the area enclosed between these two curves. And we saw that it was fairly straightforward if we started off by fixing x. So we integrated over y to begin with, we integrated 1 with respect to y and then we integrated with respect to x. So we started off by zooming in on one of the vertical elements to see how that would actually work. Now, th that, this method that we looked at last time is the best way of using a double integral to find this area. But for those of you who want to see that it could be done the other way around, then stay with me. If you haven't seen the other um, video, then go and watch that first of all, and you may well decide you're quite happy with that and don't want to bother with the alternative. But if you're up for a challenge, let's have a look at how it works the other way around. So we're going to be, first of all, integrating with respect to x. So we're going to be looking at a horizontal strip and then integrating with respect to y. Now there are two reasons why this is more, more tricky than the other method that we used. So if you look at our diagram, you can see firstly that if we're using a horizontal strip, once we get above the line y equals 2, we're not going from one curve to the other curve. So below y equals 2, we're starting off on the green curve and ending up on the red curve. But above y equals 2, we're starting off on y equals 3x minus x squared and ending up back on it again. So what we're going to do is split the area into two. So let's just draw the line in to show how we're doing that. So that's dealt with one problem we're going to be looking at two separate areas. The other problem is, well, in our inner integral, we're going to have to have our limits as x equals something and x equals something else. But both of our equations are given as y equals something. So what we need to do is to do some rearranging to make x the subject. So let's do that to start with. So let's start with the easier one. When we've got y equals a half x squared, then x squared is going to be equal to 2y. So x is going to be equal to the square root of 2y. And we've only got the right hand side of the, uh, of the curve, y equals a half x squared. So we want the positive values there. Remember, normally you would have plus or minus there. So in fact, what we've got is that x is the square root of 2y, making sure to include the y inside that square root sign. No need for any negative outside there. So that's that one dealt with. And then the other one, that's a bit more complicated. But remember, what we're actually doing here is we are thinking of y as, well, it's, it's kind of like a constant, isn't it, if we've got a quadratic in x. So if we rearrange this, we've got x squared minus 3x plus y equals 0. So that's just thinking of y equals 3x minus x squared as a quadratic in x, because we're trying to make x the subject. So then if we use the uh, quadratic formula, x is equal to negative negative 3, so it's 3 plus or minus the square root of b squared, well negative 3 squared is 9, and then we're going to subtract 4ac, so that's 4 times 1 times y, so minus 4y, all over and 2 times 1 is just 2. So we can see here that we've actually got two different values for x, which is good because that's what we need. If you think about it, we look at the green curve, the curve y equals 3x minus x squared. The left-hand values are smaller than the right-hand values in terms of the x values. And so the left-hand side is going to get the minus before the square root and the right-hand side will get the plus before the square root. So we'll see how that works out when we write down our integrals and the, uh, the limits on them. So let's just reduce those down so they're not taking up so much space and so move them over to the side. OK, and we're going to be finding the area in two parts, aren't we? So the area below y equals 2 is going to be given by, let's give ourselves plenty of space. So we're starting from y equals 0 to y equals 2 and then let's open a bracket for our inner integral and we're going from the left hand side of y equals 3x minus x squared so we want the, the smaller value that we've just found so that's x equals 3 
minus the square root of 9 minus 4y, which will all be in the square root symbol, and then that's all over 2. And that goes up to x equals the square root of 2y. And we are simply integrating 1 dx. So that's the inner integral. And then the outer integral gets its dy there. So the actual integration is really simple. It's just the limits that are a bit... Uh, bit nasty looking here. Okay, so next stage is simply to do the integration. So we're leaving the y equals naught and the y equals 2. And then when we do the integration, 1 with respect to x will give us x. And our limits are just as they were just now. So 3 minus the square root of 9 minus 4y all over 2. And x equals root of 2 y and I forgot my bracket so bracket there bracket there and the dy and then we just need to substitute in the uh, the limits so when I put in root 2y for x what I'm going to do because I know I want to integrate this with respect to y next I'm going to write root 2 and instead of writing root y, it's easier to think about integrating if we write this as y to the power of a half. So I haven't actually changed yet, I've just made it look a bit easier for the integration. So that's substituting in the top limit, and then let's have a minus and a bracket. So then we've got 3 over 2, so let's just write that separately. And then we're subtracting a half, and again I'm going to write the square root as power of a half. So 9 minus 4y to the power of a half. So all I've done there is substituted in the limits and made it look a bit easier by writing a power of a half instead of putting the square root symbol in. The other thing to do of course is to put the limits on for y and now we haven't got any x's we can simply write 0 and 2. We don't need to write y equals there. It's obvious now that it's y. Okay and then I guess I should multiply out the bracket before we actually do any integration. So let's do that. So that's just going to be root 2y to the half minus 3 over 2 and then we've got minus minus so plus a half oops, and plus a half and then 9 minus 4y to the power of a half dy okay so now we're just down to a single integral so again let's shrink down so that we give ourselves some space to uh, to continue so now it's just a matter of doing this single integral so we've got y to the power of a half. So integrating that will give us y to the power of 3 over 2 when we add 1 to the power. So dividing by 3 over 2 is the same as multiplying by 2 thirds. And we've still got our root 2 in there. So we've got 2 thirds of root 2 y to the 3 over 2. Then we're integrating uh, 3 over 2. So that's going to be minus 3 over 2y. And the last one, we'll leave the half. The 9 minus 4y is going to be raised to the 3 over 2, so we want to multiply by 2 thirds. So we've got 9 minus 4y to the 3 over 2. And of course, we've got minus 4y in there, so we need to divide by minus 4. And that's going to be between 0 and 2. So although this looks pretty unpleasant, it isn't ex really as bad as it looks. It really isn't as bad as it looks because the 9 minus 4y, we're only going to have to substitute in 2 or 0. So we're going to end up having to square root 9 or 1, which is pretty easy. So it really is going to be fine. So let's, shall we, actually, well, I know, we'll simplify it a bit first, make life a bit easier. In fact, it's only going to be that last term, isn't it, that needs simplifying. So let's just copy out the 2 thirds root 2y to the 3 over 2 minus 3 over 2y. And then we've got the 2's will cancel. 3 and minus 4 will give us minus. So it's going to be minus 9 minus 4y to the 3 over 2 all over 12. And that's between 0 and 2. So substituting in those values is going to give us 2 thirds, 2 to the half, or root 2 times 2 to the 3 over 2, minus 3 over 2 times 2, and then minus 
Well, we've got 9 minus 4 times 2, so that's going to be 1. 1 to the power of anything is 1, so minus a 12. And then we're going to subtract what we get when we put in the 0. The first two terms are simply going to be 0. And then we've got minus, putting 0 into 9 minus 4y will give us 9. And so we'll have 9 to the 3 over 2. Well, the square root of 9 is 3. 3 cubed is 27, so we'll have minus 27 over 12. So when we tidy all that lot up and simplify it, we will get 11 over 6. Remember, we've actually done this question before, and when we did it before, we got an answer of 2. So that's good that this is less than 2. So we're hoping that the other bit of the area is just going to be 1 sixth. If not, we're in trouble. Right, so that's the area done below the line y equals 2. So what we'll do is we'll just make a note of what that is, and then we'll give ourselves some space to do the area above the line y equals 2. So now we want to think about the area above the line y equals 2. So this area is going from the left-hand side of y equals 3x minus x squared to the right-hand side of y equals 3x minus x squared. So that means that the limits for the inner integral are going to be the two answers that we found that were the solutions to x squared minus 3x plus y is 0. So let's have a look at how this works. So for our inner integral, we're starting x from the left-hand side of 3x minus x squared. So the lower answer was 3 minus 9 minus the square root of 9 minus 4y all over 2. And the upper limit was 3 plus the square root of 9 minus 4y all over 2. And we're integrating 1 with respect to x. And then the outer limit well, there we're taking y from 2, because we're saying the area above y equals 2, up to the highest point of 3x minus x squared. So that will occur when x is equal to 3 over 2. So that will be, oh, we've, we've got it on the graph actually, 9 over 4 is the highest point. Well, it's kind of there. If um, you look carefully and use your imagination. Right, and then that's dy. So that's the hard work done, deciding what it is that we've got to work out. So the actual integral, as before, when we integrate 1 with respect to x, it's going to be x. So we're going to get the integral from y equals 2 to y equals 9 over 4. And then inside, when we integrate, we just get x. And the limit from well, the upper limit will be 3 plus square root of 9 minus 4y all over 2 and the lower limit x is 3 minus the square root of 9 minus 4y all over 2 and then we've got dy there. So let's just shrink that down again give ourselves a bit more space and so substituting in the uh, upper limit first of all we're going to get 3 plus the square root of 9 minus 4y all over 2. Let's just put another bracket in for the whole integral and 3 minus the square root of 9 minus 4y all over 2. Oops. And we want to do y at the end there. We've only got y's here now so let's just have 2 and 9 over 4 there. And we can actually simplify the integrand, can't we? Because we've got 3 over 2, take away 3 over 2, so they disappear, and two lots of a half of the square root of 9 minus 4y. So this isn't as bad as it looked, It was as if it was going to be. So all we've got to integrate is 9 minus 4y to the power of a half dy. So in fact, it's a simpler integral than, we, than the one we had before. Maybe. <laughs> Okay, so integrating, we have, well, we'll have 9 minus 4y to the 3 over 2. And dividing by 3 over 2 is multiplying by 2 thirds. We'll divide by minus 4. And we want to put that, put the limits in 2 and 9 over 4. So I'll leave you to do that. And... 
you should find that you get one sixth so that the total area will be the area above uh, y equals 2 is 1 sixth, the area below is 11 sixth, so it comes out as 2 square units. So if you've made it to the end of this, well done. <laughs>